Welcome, welcome, beautiful ones. I'm so excited to be here on day two of Confident and Free, the masterclass to help you take your teaching online and really formulate what your virtual business looks like, demystify the technology, really create and establish a brand that feels aligned and clear and resonant with you and who you are looking to teach and what you are offering in the world. So today we are going to dive all into the, the tech stuff. So from start to finish, I'm just going to give you some guidelines on tools that you can use and things that I think you need to develop and establish for your business to, again, to create that really clear brand presence and begin to just magnetically attract your avatar, the clients that you really want to be working with. So I posted a little poll here and I would love to know from you and this will be here the whole time and because we are streaming live on Facebook as well, feel free to just add to the comments. What is your biggest struggle with online teaching? Is it attendance? The technology? Translating teaching skills to the virtual space? Or something else? So please do let me know. Um, I've been teaching online now since 2014, and I have had a lot of time to work through trial and error and really establish a clear idea and presence and offerings. So I'm so happy to help you do the same. And I really love the ability to step into a place of experiential learning so that it is co-creative where you're offering feedback and I'm offering support if it's asked for. And um, thank you so much for taking the time to share with me. I'm just going to pop on my phone for one second. I have a message from someone who's having trouble getting in. And I'll invite you to, while I do this, to take a moment to really arrive in your body to get something to drink, have a journal nearby, and you know maybe even your computer. If you are on it, you can minimize uh, exit full screen. Um, if, you, if you automatically go to full screen and zoom up in the right hand corner, in the, it says view, and you can go to view and exit full screen. And that way you can have two windows side by side as we do some of the online work stuff today. So. Let me just share this link. Okay. Beautiful. So I felt when I really first started teaching online, I had no idea where to begin. And I had a tech background, quite a strong tech background. I've been building websites. I joke around, but like since the World Wide Web was created, I've <laughs> been building websites since like the early 90s. And it felt really easeful to do that piece, but there was this key to translating teaching online, to marketing and gaining attendance, to really deciding what my offers were going to be because teaching a weekly class it just isn't sustainable in a virtual space. I mean, I don't really know how sustainable it is in, in an eye-to-eye -eye space either, honestly. So I love bringing in this idea that we shift from yoga teachers or class-focused teachers to entrepreneurial mindset. And part of that is to um, build community, to focus on creating and nourishing connection. We talked about this quite a bit yesterday. Becoming well known as an expert in your area, your niche. I, I do, I have two feelings about niching down that I'll share with you. The one is that it's super important that you are clear on who you're working with but you don't only have to have one audience. I think I mentioned yesterday, I work, with, I work with women in the liminal stages of their lives. 
so I tend to have three different audiences in my private yoga therapy business, and I work with yoga teachers too. So I have like four different aspects to my business and many, many, many offerings. So you don't have to feel like you're boxed into one thing, but I will suggest that you choose one thing and you do one thing at a time because it gets really confusing if you are jumping all over the place. Not a lot gets accomplished. So welcome, welcome if you're just arriving. I put a little poll up if you'd like to take a moment to answer that. That would be so helpful. So becoming well known and an expert in your area and maybe this was the case in the in the in-person space but moving into the virtual world is an entirely different thing so just consider if that is happening for you right now and no judgment if it's not because it takes time and intentional community building for that to happen the next step is really considering and this is what we're going to dive into today is considering what your offer is going to look like. So I love to talk about offers in terms of, and this comes from my beautiful coach, Carla, and it's been so helpful to me because, as I mentioned, I, I was a little all over the place with my offers and my work and my clients and my avatars. I had a lot going on all at the same time. And she really helped me hone in on one thing at a time. So I'm going to share some magic with you, um, and if you like to think this way, wonderful. I built it up as a, a pyramid, but you can think of it as a mandala or a fractal if that feels more resonant. I will share my screen again and pull up an image if you're a visual person, it's helpful. And um, just get to the right page. Quite far in. I'm going backwards from the way that I did this the first time around. So you will, you will get <laughs> a different thing than the first group got. And the first group was huge. We had 63 people, I think I mentioned, from seven different countries. And uh, the program filled up, and so I had an overflow because I like to keep my program small and, and intimate containers so that they are individualized. And I had overflow into a new program, so I decided to do this again. And I will tell you about the program that I'm offering at the end of this tomorrow. But here is the structure of a business, perhaps, a yoga business. It's a really wonderful way to think about the, the way that people can work with you. So, for example, the bottom of the pyramid is the group classes, the drop-ins, the donation-based classes. Personally, I don't know about you, but I love offering these. I'm a yoga therapist, and it makes it accessible to everyone. And it's important for me to have accessible spaces. So this is the, the foundational level, the simplest way, the least expensive way, and the least investment of time and commitment that people can come into your space and work with you. So maybe you do once a week, classes or even once a month classes say with the cycles of the moon but these classes even if you're teaching them seven times a week they're not financially sustainable they just aren't really so we definitely want to create a system that is set up so that we're providing incredible transformation and value for our, our clients and that they are investing in themselves as well so that they're working very hard towards this transformation. So I don't know if you've ever invested in a program, a training, a coach that felt like just a minimal, very small investment and maybe it didn't motivate you to really, to really take it seriously. I have so many free trainings that are like sitting in a folder on my computer that I've never done. And then the, the trainings that I've invested $4,000 for one month in, like I am all in with every ounce of my being because I've committed to this upgrade and this huge investment of time and resources. So just thinking in terms of foundational level, and it doesn't have to look like this. This is mine. This is how I set up my, my structure of my work. But 
It can look like so many different things. So the foundational level, and then the next step, I have series and packages. That's where they commit to work with you for a period of four weeks or six weeks. And, and that's common too in the yoga studio industry. And then a level up is workshops, right? So kind of the same thing, but now we're looking at hundreds of dollars in investment. And then when you move up to the signature program, that's where we get really fun. That's where we get really creative and where we get to focus even more on transformation offered and space holding and time and resource investment so that your ideal client is looking to get from point A to point B and they're looking to you to do it because you've gotten really clear on your story, on your brand story and on the way that you present this to the world and you've taken this transformation path yourself and you know it works and you know that you can offer it and so they want to work with you and it's a pretty significant investment this is a thousand dollar and up investment and you know generally six weeks to six months depending on how you set it up so just give me a thumbs up if you are familiar with this kind of structure of programs being offered right now by yoga teachers or um, health and wellness professionals Yes, thank you. And then of course the next level up is it's like containers like a retreat. And that can happen also in the virtual space. So we'll talk about that a little bit today. Um, about how to create a really beautiful virtual space. And uh, have you been in one? Have you been in a virtual space that felt really incredible and transformative and a, and a well-held container that created community and transformation and up-leveling. I know I have, and I learned a lot on, uh, about how to do that through the courses that I've taken and the beauty of getting to work with people all over the world. So you can host a retreat in a virtual space, or you can even create a hybrid experience. And this is what I absolutely love is your signature program, right, can end or close out with a retreat at the end. So just think about different layers and levels of offerings. And then of course, usually the, the largest investment is the one-to-one -one kind of VIP experience. So I'm talking beyond a one-to-one -one coaching package, um, which can be in the realm of, of like series and packages. Uh, financially and investment wise so for example I'm a yoga therapist as I said so I I go and I look at the market rate in my area and I charge $250 an hour for a session but I don't work with anyone for just one session because that's not going to benefit them so we work together for a set period of time usually it's a package of six so that investment is quite significant. I sell a package of six for $1,200. And it's, it's a beautiful way to commit with someone over a period of time. But then I have seen this, and I'm not doing this, but I will share what I've seen and what I may do at some point, for sure, is like a one-on-one -on -one really kind of VIP experience where you charge $10,000 for a day with someone. So I don't know how you feel about that. I just let you know that's what coaches are doing. <laughs> and when I hear that and feel that, I'm like, oh, how? You know, why? Like, oh, I, I feel all this aversion to it, but that's my own stuff. But just know that that can be the top of your pyramid if it feels good for you or you're fractal. And um, yeah, I had a business coach. I paid for one month of work with her. It was $4,000 for one month of a group experience and $10,000 for like three hours of her one-on-one -on -one time in person. And it was wild and it was transformative. And believe me, when I invested that kind of money, I was, I was getting my money's worth. I was showing up for everything. I was doing all the work. I made huge leaps and bounds in my business because yeah, because I was invested. So it's, it's fun to play with what's in the realm of what's 
outside of your comfort zone, but not quite in the realm of what is totally impossible. Because we want to stay true to our heart, true to our dharma, true to the whole experience of what we're offering. So just a little idea of what your offer is. And, and I'm starting here first because I do feel like depending on what you really want to focus on is how you'll choose what technology you're going to use. So there are some technology basics that, that you need or I suggest that you have. Um, let me get to the right page now. <laughs> here we go. Equipment and software. And, and you kind of, you need a good quality camera. So uh, a smartphone will do. And if you're using your smartphone, I'll take mine out and show you, you're gonna, you're not gonna do the selfie side, the like, the side you look at to take a picture of yourself. You're gonna use the actual camera side and you're gonna put it, if you're streaming live on Facebook in a vertical situation, but if you're on Zoom, you'll put it horizontal. And you'll use this camera because it's much higher quality than the front-facing camera. So just a note about cell phone use. Cell phones are high quality if you have a smartphone, so there is nothing wrong with that. You'll just find you know, a nice stand for it, something you could place it on a bookshelf and, and really have someone help you or even put your yoga mat out on the floor and just play with the setup so you're sure that, that people can really see you and then you'll have your laptop nearby if you're using Zoom. Most people are using Zoom, but there is Google Meet. But you'll have your laptop nearby so you can see everyone as well. And I really like to, um, a one note about that, if you are streaming from two devices, one of them will, you will not connect to audio. So choose which device you're gonna connect to audio on, obviously. You may have found this out the hard way, but if you connect to audio with both devices, you're going to have this horrible feedback noise. It's going to be like a nails down the chalk bar sound. So only connect to the audio with one of the devices. And I really recommend, we'll, we'll talk more about this, but I'll say it now as we're talking about equipment. Um, I highly suggest not modeling or demoing or practicing while you teach. And this is the way that I learned, this is the way I've always practiced and taught, but especially in the virtual space. So no problem if that's what you've been doing, but if you have been, I would love to invite you to contemplate how it would look if you sat and observed and really held space and presence with your students as you just use your words to guide them. And I talked a lot about this in the in the first time I ran this course, and you'll receive, as I said, the recording to that as well. But the ability to hold space and create community and create safe, inclusive, trauma-informed places really happens when we allow our full presence and that is not happening if we are practicing or demoing, right? So I would just invite you to consider what that would look like and play with it a little bit if it feels like something that you're curious about. Or maybe, you know, let me know. Feel free to use the chat box or unmute. Let me know if that's something you're already doing. But I definitely find in the virtual space there are a few things that, that make it warm and and bring and keep people coming back. So the first one is creating community just as it would happen in person naturally. So you enter a little bit early, maybe you play a little music, um, you know, you encourage conversation and sharing, everybody comes in unmuted and just has the opportunity to connect at the beginning of class and at the end of class. And then of course, during class, make sure you mute everybody so that it's not disruptive if like, you know, things are going on. Somebody's dog is barking, you know, all kinds of things. So just 
invite the experience that's similar to why people are coming to in-person or were coming to in-person classes. A lot of it is about the community. So try to foster that. I have a brilliant friend and teacher and expert at establishing community in my life. And I've been taking classes with her since COVID. And I'm so excited that I get to do that because she lives in New Mexico. I never would have been able to otherwise because uh, she wasn't teaching online before. I mean, she was, but not, not like this. She was teaching for like Yoga International and things like that. But now it's a Zoom class. And when we come in, I see the community that she's creating and it's really beautiful. And I, I try to model what I do after, after that. She's inspired me because she does set it up in a way that feels really natural and really nourishing. And it's a series, so you have to sign up for a number of classes. There's not a drop-in option. So you build this, like, this connect and the connection space that grows over time. Um, music, we'll talk about music. Yes, royalty-free music, there's tons of it online. I like Moby. I'll put in a few resources. Moby is great. Um, music on Zoom is really difficult. So there are specific music settings. If you, I think somewhere on the Facebook page, if you're on there, I'll tag you in it. So make sure you please do join the Facebook page, uh, the group, and because there are tons of resources on there. There were lots of questions in the first round. and. There are specific Zoom settings for that, and you will, you'll wanna go into the back end of Zoom through the website, not the actual platform. Um, if you're on your computer, you, you can do that, but it's complicated with Zoom because they have natural, they're made for dialogue and voice, they're not made for music. So there's noise canceling technology, and I don't know if you've heard this happen, but if I play music, I have all my music settings like at their optimal point. And still, if I'm playing music and talking, it sounds really funny. So I don't play music for my classes. Um, I'll only play music if I'm not talking at the same time. Or if I'm only going to like say two words and that's all. A fun way to do it, and you may have heard this, is to create Spotify playlists and then share the link and kind of do a countdown, a one, two, three, everybody hit play, and they're on mute, so you can't, so there's no noise feedback loop happening, and they get to enjoy their practice to music if they want, and you don't have to worry about the quality of the sound, because it just doesn't, it, I just, haven't found a way to make it work well, and I have all the settings that like music teachers are using over Zoom, and it's still not ideal. Um, there's still like a tinny, echoey, uh, sometimes like, if for someone who's sensitive to sound, like a, a disturbing kind of quality to it. So just know I, I don't recommend playing music and teaching, unfortunately. But there are royalty-free music sites that I will share with you. <laughs> that being said. And with Spotify, it's fine as long as you share the playlist. Um, because all the music is set up to go through Spotify. It's all licensed and that's okay as long as you are sharing the playlist directly from the application. Okay. I hope that answered your question. And um, yes, it is tricky though with Zoom. So I can show you an example a little bit later. I'll play music and I'll talk. And my settings, as I said, are optimized. Um, and it still doesn't, it doesn't quite sound great. So you'll definitely want to have a, a, some good lighting. Um, a ring light is great. And I have, I'll show you my little lighting setup. I have a little, I have a ring light and then I have two big lights. And they're not very expensive. I think I, um, yeah, like the ring light is like $20. And 
if you have natural light, you can even be next to a window. You don't want to be, obviously, have the window behind you. That's why I have two lights, because the window is behind me. So if it's brighter outside, there's, I'm backlit, and that takes away some of the quality. A good microphone, as you may know, sound is more important than anything in a yoga class. So I will generally use, I have this Blue Yeti mic. This is my favorite, and I have a filter on it. Um, there are the Apple AirPods, I hear are really good if they stay in your ears. Some people can't keep them in their ears, right? depending on the shape and size of your ears. Um, I like the Pixel MK7 wireless mic. That's really great if you are going to, if you have a class that you demo for. Um, you know, I, I know some of the teachers that I work with, with the roll method, they, they definitely demo, so, or yoga tune-up. So depending on your style, if you are demoing, you'll definitely want to have a wireless mic because you're moving around. And as you move around, your voice is changing. It's coming in and going out. Even with a good microphone like the Yeti, it's not quite picking everything up. So that's really it as far as equipment. And then, of course, software. So if you would let me know, do you already have a website? Um, yes or no. And if you don't, that's OK. I'm going to give you two amazing tools to help you build one. One is super simple. I mentioned it yesterday, Offering Tree. It's really, it was made during COVID just for yoga teachers and fitness professionals who had to translate to teaching online. And it's set up really well. So I love recommending it. I'm not an affiliate, but I, I just, I highly recommend it because it is so simple and it has everything that you need. So you'll want to have a way to get paid. As I mentioned yesterday, you don't want to have to have one-on-one -on -one kind of, and yes, there is one-on-one, -on -one, but for every class that you teach or every offering that you have, it's beautiful to have a system set up so that people can sign up anywhere, anytime, and you don't have to be tethered to your phone. So you want kind of that automation for your systems. And that is what these, um, a WordPress, okay, WordPress.com as a blog. That's great. So you can import your blog to another website. And um, it would be good if you're open to, to shifting to go ahead and, and take the time to do it. We set up Offering Tree. Um, together as a group in, in an hour. So we're gonna talk a little about what you would need to do that and then I'll, I'll send you info so that you have the guidance and feel free to reach out to me. I'm gonna be supporting you through this process for the next week or so. I'm gonna keep the group open and I'm just gonna help you get it off the ground because that is my goal for this whole series is to really see you get clear and have a system and understand some of the technology. And it doesn't happen overnight, but, but the basics can. The basics don't have to be overwhelming, and that is like having a payment system, a scheduling system, a newsletter service, so that you can, send, you can write a blog and then send out a newsletter to everyone that is on your list and say, hey, I just wrote this, and really foster connection and nourish relationships, which is really what it's all about. So here are some of the, the tools that you can use from the, the lowest, easiest level to the most challenging. So Offering Tree, easiest. You can go in there, like I said, you can do it all in an hour. Um, even if you're not tech savvy, even if you feel like it's not your wheelhouse, you can do it. And um, there is a guide that they've created and they have amazing tech support. So if you run into any challenges, you just send them a message and they help you and it's beautiful. It, Offering Tree has, you know, I'll pull up, I'll pull up someone's site, my, um, 
uh, this beautiful woman created this site together in the first rendition of this these sessions. Let me see. Earth to no, that's not it. I'm sorry. She might not have her SEO set up. So, Earth Roots Yoga. Her Instagram will take us there. Um, let me make sure you can see my screen. Do you see my um, my screen where I'm jumping around different places, or do you still see the um, the download? So if you are you able to see this uh, Earth Roots Yoga with Clarissa? Okay, there we go. The web design page. Okay, I thought so. Yes. So Earth Roots Yoga. Here we go. There we are. Now you should see Clarissa. So this is a sample of the offering tree website and she did this in in like a day so all you'll need to have is the name of your business we're gonna have some home play today where you get really clear on your branding and like create a mood board if you haven't already done that and a couple of good photos a really clear one of you of your face and you know a couple of really nice photos they don't have to be professionally taken they just have to be clear and high quality so you can go you can take it tomorrow if you don't have one but it definitely should be clear of your face it doesn't have to be of you doing yoga but you want people to see your face so if you see right here this little box as soon as you see you see her face you see her like you get an impression of her work right away, earthy, um, you know, just consider a few words that you would think of when you see this. And it shows you all of her events. And with Offering Tree, this is an Offering Tree website, you are able to schedule events, classes, workshops, series, packages, one-on-ones, that's what I mean. It's, it's made for yoga teachers, so it has everything that we need. Um, I, I actually love it. And then you can subscribe. So you just click the subscribe button and sign up for her email. And then you'll know when she is offering classes or when she sends out a newsletter. It has a blog. It has a schedule. So... And, and the colors are all customizable. You can put your logo in there, your photos in there. It is a little cookie cutter. There's not a lot of customizability. This is basically the bones of it for every single person. There's the main photo, the upcoming events. It has the same look for everyone, but it's a great place to start, especially if you're not tech savvy because it's as easy as easy can be. Um, so let me know if you have questions about that, but I do love offering tree. Um, super simple and it has everything you need built in. You don't have to have three different applications or software programs to do the same thing. So I see a chat box. Let me see the cost. Oh, I think it's $19 a month. And there was, and I don't know if it's still happening, but there was a special for like $11 or even free for the first month. They, they change it. I've been looking at them now for like two months. Uh, it came to my attention that this program existed and I checked it out and I was like, oh, I'm gonna share this with my clients because it's so great. Um, and it's so affordable. So if you consider you have that and you have a Zoom account, excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold. I'm looking for a tissue. One second. <laughs> Across the room. <laughs> okay, excuse me. Zoom, I'm trying to remember. Zoom is free, I think, up until 45 minutes. So you can host classes on Zoom. Just know you don't want to go beyond 45 minutes. So 
people really ask for 30 minute classes. And it's a great w place to start with that foundational level of your offering. And as you build and as you like build your audience, and if you already have people that you're working with that are so excited to work with you again, it's worth the investment. I Zoom, I think, I have an upgraded account. I think I pay $25 a month. I pay a lot, but I have a lot going on. I have online courses and all the things. Um, but the basics, bare bones kind of thing is it's minimal investment. You can make it back in one week, and it just feels so easeful and so worth it. Squarespace is the next level up. It's a little more intermediate for tech savvy people, and um, it offers a lot more customizability, and it integrates with its own scheduling system through Acuity, which is also a little more complicated to figure out. So I would dive into that if you feel like you have some tech skills or you're going to outsource this. It's a really great website option. Um, it's a little more expensive than offering tree. I think Squarespace runs about, I want to say $30 a month. I used to build websites uh, on the side <laughs> when I was younger. So things have changed a lot since then. But, um, and then the final is WordPress, and WordPress is the most complicated, and I, it's what I use. It has the absolute utmost capability for everything, and it's different than WordPress.com. Like, that's the blog. WordPress.org is an open source um, software system, so that means that everyone, if you're a programmer, or I can hire a programmer, and create my own special program that will integrate into WordPress. So it's very complicated, and I'm incredibly techy. I have I have an Air Force history in technology. I've been building websites, like I said, since the 90s, and sometimes I have to outsource my WordPress stuff because it gets too complicated. So I, I have it on there because, you know, you might want to outsource. I, I assume if you're here with me that you're not tech savvy enough that I would recommend it for you. And that's fine. It's really not necessary. Um, WordPress is kind of a very advanced option. So if you want to build out an online course and have it online and have it all hosted on your website and even have your own membership hosted on your website, that's what WordPress is for. Um, but again, with new things being created all the time, like Squarespace, has membership options now, and I'm sure Offering Tree is going to. They are relatively new and like expanding their capabilities all the time. So I would start if I if I if I was starting, <laughs> I would start with Offering Tree and just go in and like build it out and see how it feels. And it truly is simple that you don't need tech skills to do it. I have some pros and cons here. You have this download. I just kind of went over all of them. Um, so I broke out each one for you. What I love about them, what I don't love about them. Just if you're considering upgrading or if you decide to start with offering tree and at some point you want to upgrade because you want your website to look a little more, you know, not so cookie cutter, that's an option too. So I do love that Offering Tree also has tiered pricing and like donation based classes available. So that was a really key feature that I thought was cool. And then, um, Squarespace, like I said, very customizable, all-inclusive as well. So they have their own scheduling system, their own newsletter system. You don't have to have all these separate pieces, which is so nice because I have that with WordPress. With WordPress, you have to have all the separate pieces, and it gets to be really expensive. Um, but again, if you look at WordPress, it has more than over 11,000 themes and plugins for just about anything. And if you can't find something that you want, you can build it, and it's just its pretty cool when you get into it. But I just wanted to share that it's there as an option, and again, it's wordpress.org, not wordpress.com. 
So analytics, Google Analytics are amazing. Great question. Um, Google Analytics, you can set up an account and then you will, and, and there's a place to do this wherever you choose to put your website that you can install the code in the header tag um, and that will track everyone who's coming to your website, where they're coming from, what the user behavior is. So like, do they come to the first page and drop off? Do they go look at your classes? Do they stay on and read your blogs? Like what is their behavior on your site? And do they, what is their gender? Where are they from? Like all this information is available with analytics. So it's really fun and if you like data, um, I definitely recommend checking out Google Analytics. You can also go to Moz, M-O-Z, and that's another really great source for analytics. Okay. And then here are some options if you are deciding to build an online course. I love online courses. It's a great way to you know, have a six-week series of something with people. And you don't need to have a platform. So I have seen, I have seen coaches and, and teachers do this via Google Drive or Google Classroom. That's totally free. So I didn't put that here, but that is an option. So this is, again, from like the most expensive and, and robust at the top, Kajabi, to, you know, less robust, less options, less customization, and all the way down to things like Udemy and Skillshare where they pay you or where they advertise and you get a share. So fun places to, to look at if you are thinking about course development, which I highly recommend. Um, having an online course is so fulfilling and it is so beautiful because it is this community that you're connecting and it is this like transformation. You're taking people from point A to point B, whatever that may be. So I would love to hear from you what that is. Um, it was part of the home play from yesterday, but if you'd like to come into the Facebook group and share a little about that, that would be amazing. So this is your offer. We're gonna go into this more tomorrow. So I'm gonna pause here and just see if there are any more questions. You know, it's a lot in a little amount of time and I wanna to get to the branding before we close and the little bit of home play that I have for you today. And if you do home play all three days, if you participate and come into the Facebook group and show up in there, I am offering you a free one-on-one -on -one one hour call where we have a laser focus session on building out your system in whatever you specifically need. So it's really, it's, it's worth $250 value and it's, it's a really fantastic time where we get clear together. So I do love inviting participation and also like rewarding it, making it fun and playful and kind of a contest. The ones, uh, insurance receipts so are you are you a yoga therapist Sharon so can you tell me a little more about what you mean by insurance receipts I know you're in Canada correct Yeah, I mean, I, there's, with all of the systems, there are receipts. So a, both Acuity and, oh, the cancer community, right. Um, so both Acuity, if you choose to go with Squarespace, and Offering Tree work with Stripe. So you'd have to set up your Stripe account if you don't already have one. And then Stripe provides receipts and really wonderful tracking for tax purposes and everything like that. So yes, you can get them quite easily. 
Sure thing. And are you are you working with them online? Cool. Very good. Yeah, that must be so rewarding. And where in Canada are you? Can I ask? Through a community center. Cool. I wonder if you know Anne Pittman. She is. A, um, I think she, I'm trying to remember where she is, but she runs the Embodied School of Yoga Therapy in Canada, and she has a lot of resources on her page. I'll type it in here. Um, I would check her out because when you're thinking about like how to translate online work to um, in a virtual space for communities and patients like that, I, she's she would be the go-to in my mind. Um, embodied yoga therapy, embodied school, or school of embodied yoga therapy. She's brilliant. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. And I, I can send an email introduction if you like. Just message me and I'm happy to do that. I've worked with her um, on a project and, and just wonderful, wonderful connection to have. So, okay. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the share and talk a little bit with you about branding. And this is the fun part. When you're creating your website, to really find... the feel, the vibe, the embodiment of you, of your values, of what you offer, and use the visual imprint of that for your offerings, for your marketing, for everything. So there's consistency for brand recognition purposes, and there's also a, a feeling that comes with certain colors and certain things. If you look at any any large company from, you know, Pepsi to Apple, there is like a very recognizable brand. And when you're a small company or an individual, you really, that's just as important as it is for a massive company. You want, again, people to recognize that you are an expert in this field and that they can recognize you where you show up, whether that's on, Facebook or on LinkedIn or on Instagram or on your website and to have this consistent presence so that they always know that they're talking to Sharon or they always know that they're talking to Ann Pittman. Like there's a level of consistency. So the first thing is color theory, which is a lot of fun. And if you're working therapeutically, you probably already know a bit about this or if you're an artist, you know a bit about this. Um, just the beginning here I have is like choose three to six values that you hold in your brand vision and then think of colors that represent those feelings. So for example, if your values for your brand are, are bringing in peacefulness and serenity and holistic well-being, like what colors represent those qualities or those values. So this is a fun, playful thing to do, um, is to go into Pinterest and create a board, a mood board, and it can be private or you can make it shareable, and just go in and create this, gather together images that feel aligned and supportive of what you're trying to evoke emotionally and colors, textures, patterns, things like that. Um, and then I use Canva, that's another tool, very, uh, very wonderful tool if you're not already using it. From your Pinterest board, you can go into Canva and upload it in there and then like peek at what the color codes are. There's a way to pull out the colors so that you can get the, the hexagonal code that then you can put into your website. Um, and there is a totally like video tutorial about this on Offering Tree's website. If you go on theirs and you look at their tutorials, they take you step by step through building the website. It's funny, I tried to do it in the first um, 
video the first time around, and I got locked out of my um, my trial account, so I couldn't do it. And then I went in and I found theirs, and it was like, well, perfect, because why reinvent the wheel anyway? So they had already done it. Um, but like I said, I've been using them for a little while, and I, I just I just love what they offer, and they have great tutorials. Everything from using your own colors to your own fonts to how to upload your own images and things like that. But consider color theory as, as an important part of creating your brand identity and really having consistency across all of your platforms. Wherever you show up, wherever you have a presence, just knowing that it's important to be consistent. And here's an example of a mood board and also how it changes over time. So this is mine, my personal mood board, mine from 2014 and the one from 2021. My work has changed a lot and, and therefore so has my brand identity. Um, so just know that it's fun and playful and you're not locked into anything. It's going to evolve and it's going to transform with just as everything. And I love this little quote by Georgia O'Keeffe. I found I could say things with color and shapes that I couldn't say any other way. Things I had no words for. And that's it. So I'm going to stop the share now and just offer any last bits for questions. I'm also going to peek at the Facebook group where we are live streaming and see if there are any questions there. Um, the home play from yesterday is to come on live and tell your story or feel free to write it out and post it with an image. And the home play from today is to create a mood board and come on in and share it. And you can look at what others have done too. It really, really doesn't have to be perfect. It's honestly, like I said, ever evolving. So just know that beginning is the most important step. All right, any questions? I'm gonna go ahead and, and stop the recording. And thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this was helpful and I'm so excited to see what you bring and what you create and what comes through as you dive into this concept of finding your ideal client, of thinking of your offerings and putting them out into the world in a concrete way that feels really authentic and true to you.